Hello, hello, welcome to Adventures in Small Business. The program is a collaborative effort by the Hawaii, the U.S. Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific. The program is to showcase local entrepreneurs and um, other lo small businesses and their starts and to hear about their adventures. I am Laurie Hiramatsu from the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, and today we're fortunate to have two entrepreneurs. Um, Nicholas Conford and then Beyond uh, Gablan, correct? Founders yes, yes. and owners of Purvey Donut Stop um, on Kona Street. Welcome and thank, thank you, you for thank being you. here. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, could you please share with us your story? We can start off with um, your backgrounds, um, how you started, and a little bit about each other. Okay, uh, I'm Nicholas Conford. Um, I'm originally from Oregon. I've been out here about 11, actually a little over 11 years now. Um, pretty much the whole time I've been here and then even back home was in the service industry in one form or another, um, from serving coffee houses, from actually serving tables to bartending. Um, yeah, and that's, we actually met through bartending. In Oregon? Uh, no. Here. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't make it up the island. Yeah. Uh, my name is Brian Zbland, uh, born and raised here. Uh, same thing, worked in the food and beverage for 15 years, did everything from dishwasher to manage, uh, bartended most of my time, uh, and then at that point I worked at the hotel and that's how I met Nick. So where did you first meet and how did you come up with this idea of a, a donut shop? Uh, we originally met at the Modern Honolulu where we both worked um, bartending and then I mean, we were there working together for three or four yeah. years four or so years. like that. Okay. Um, and uh, the idea kind of got sparked by starting a bar, kind of getting out of working for someone else and starting a bar. And then um, as we dove into that more, it just kind of became obvious to both of us that we didn't want to get further into the nightlife. It was a thing to try to get out of. Um, he's got kids, he's married, those types of things. I'm you know, coming home at six in the morning type of thing. It's just not real fun. And you can only do it so long. <laughs> yeah. um, and so that kind of slowly transformed into a right. coffee venture. Right. And then that slowly transformed into a donut venture, which yeah. we still sell coffee just, as well. But <laughs> so it started off where you first just talking about you know having being entrepreneurs, having your own business, and then it went from a coffee shop all the way to a, a donut shop, right? right? Yes. So yes. how did it morph into that? And then how did the name Purvey? What does it mean? Or did did you come across that? Yeah. So we um like you said, we started off as a coffee venture. Um, couldn't find the real estate to do what we wanted to do. Um, being Hawaii, you know, there's only so much land. Yes. Uh, we're lucky enough to um, meet up with Iolani Center, mm. and they wanted some kind of food slash coffee um, restaurant in there or okay. business. And at that point, we're kind of you know going over donuts and seeing you know, what else can we do besides everybody. Uh, everybody has coffee, um, and we had this great idea that you know we're gonna make donuts. We've never made a donut before in our life, but we're going to do it. How did you learn? <laughs> okay, we're going from a bartender skill set to now a baker, donut maker skill. So how did you learn and uh, what was the process? How long did it take? I think part of it was funny because when I brought up the coffee idea, because I have um, history working with coffee and those types of things and trying to convince him, say, hey, you know, what? I like the idea of going to business. I like this, but we're not doing the bar thing. Right? Okay. But do this it's coffee. Kind of he says, I don't even drink coffee. I don't know anything about coffee. I said, it's the same thing as bartending. It's just a different product. Um, you don't deal with you know, angry drunks. You're dealing with people in the morning and trying to make them happy. And yeah. It's yeah. just a different it's atmosphere. Um, and then transforming into the donut thing, it was seeing the niche that something that like a product that's been around for hundreds of years, okay. um, it's proven itself to last. And there's a lot of opportunities with making unique um, experiences through it, not just the product, but really making a one-of-a-kind uh, experience that no other donut shop we believe has done uh, what we do. Um, so then at that point, we pretty much committed to it and started researching everything we could, <laughs> yes. watched every YouTube video, and um, we actually linked up with a pastry chef in San Francisco, um, <laughs> flew over there. They kind of taught us the basics of at least how to make somewhat of a donut. Um, and then from there, it was more focused on the business side of things and figuring out how to get doors open and all the hurdles that came with that. And then testing things in our machine because it was completely different. So there was a lot of, yeah. yeah. 
A lot of trial and error. So this donut um, chef or pastry, how did you connect with the person? You just cold called, called him, or somebody introduced you to them? We had a mutual friend. Um, our mutual friend kind of put us in contact. We went up there, and we basically had about two days. Uh, we, two stayed, days. we stayed there three days. And um, we went through different mixes, different uh, recipes. Uh, it's kind of a funny story, but we made about 200 plus donuts, and we're in San Francisco going to the hotel we're staying at and saying, try this donut. Try to this anybody, donut. you just walk in there asking I'm, people to try the donut? Essentially, and then, pretty much, especially yeah. the hotel. Like anyone, yeah. they, they knew us, so we'd take them in and just drop them off the whole yeah. staff. And, Get their opinion on them. The feedback. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Change the recipe <laughs> according to that. So this recipe is now your recipe? Yeah. Yes. Ah, nice. So how did you come up with the name? So the name, we wanted something that's catchy. It, you know, people don't forget it. Um, lengthwise, there's a lot that went into thinking of, you know, how many letters, how many things you want to do. We really want to build a brand, um, not just have a name that um, goes like any other business, and it stands alone. Um, purvey, there's a lot of meanings to it to us. Um, there's purveyor, um, which obviously you're making and selling goods. Yes. Um, to purvey is to express a message or a view. Um, so for us, and we, this is our way to purvey ourselves and um, different things that we say messages or views, and um, to us it's just like an environment and kind of a culture we're trying to create. We wanted to purvey um, aloha as well. Like it's um, one of our biggest things, um, purveying that message of just love and you know having fun, uh, enjoying life. enjoying the product, enjoying exactly. what you're doing, the experience. Um, that was something really big for us. Important so, for you, folks. Yeah. And then the the logo, your uh, unicorn. Did you? How did that come about? Uh, idea and. What does it represent? Um, it, well, it, it honestly started from a Dr. Pepper bottle that came home one time, and it had a it had a unicorn on it, and we're like, you know, that is really funny. Um, it wasn't this one, but then we just started playing with the idea because we had been working on a logo for quite some time and just trying to find something that fit, you know, yeah. something that tied into Hawaii, all these things, and you know, we'd done islands, we'd done turtles, we'd done right. palm trees, yeah. Yeah. nothing fit, fit what we were looking to do. Um, and so this concept really came from, hey, here's something that has nothing to do with donuts, but it makes people smile. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. They walk in and this is the first thing they see that's, it automatically makes them smile or Happy. laugh. And, yeah. um, so, so that was kind of the idea behind it. And then it just kind of kept growing kept from there. Growing. Yeah. It kept growing. It caught on to like <laughs> yeah. all ages, yes. across all different devices. Everybody we have likes, a unicorn recognizes army. a unicorn. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. And it's, a, it's a, an interesting market that we didn't know the existed, <laughs> but people love unicorns. and. I mean, we they get do. people searching out just because the painting we have on our wall. Like, the, they want the to unicorn. take a photo. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the selfies, huh? Yeah. The selfie yeah. pictures. So, what has your experience been working with Hawaii Small Business Development Center, and how did you register? What, uh, can you just kind of walk some of some people who are looking to start a business? Share your, your experience from startup, um, registering, all the way through. Um, share some you know, insights and you know, maybe stage advice of what you went through. <laughs> I would say for like starting up, there's, I mean, there's a lot of unknowns, there's a lot of questions, there's a lot of hurdles that you see in front of you, um, where when we got connected with the Small Business Development Center, um, it, was, it just opened doors and put us in connection with people. It's a, a reliable source that you can trust, um, where, you know, if, say, yeah. I need to try to find yeah. a banker or a lawyer, I can cold call 100 lawyers, but I don't know which one has yeah. a reliable uh, reputation and with the Small Business Center, that's one thing that we were able to get. We went in and said, hey, you need to you know, <laughs> trademark. Here's mm -hmm. three lawyers that we yeah. suggest or recommend. And um, from that from, to funding, um, putting us in connection with different banks and people higher up in the banks that can help us uh, try to build those relationships. Um, yeah, I mean, working with you guys has been awesome. You guys, any question we have, you guys are quick to answer, quick to help. And you guys are knowledgeable on it, you know. Us being entrepreneurs and new to this whole thing. I mean, like you said, we worked in bars. And yeah. Totally different from running a you know our own business. So it Thank was just you. the resources yeah. that you guys provided for us and help us. Well, I'd say the other big thing is obviously the grant side of things that you've kind of put. I mean, those are a lot of things that I think they're out there for people to find if you're searching for them. But as you're building a business, you don't really the put time, time into yeah. doing those things. So. Um, having you come and contact us and say, hey, you know, this grant is available and this is something that you guys could qualify for. And 
Um, things like that, I think, are huge, too. I'm glad. I'm glad that um, Hawaii Small Business Development Center is able to assist you. And we'll always be here, wherever you, you know, <laughs> through your journey, you thank know, you, thank as you, you um, build your business and continue yeah. to grow. So how, what would have um, some of the stumbling blocks that you encountered, um, your biggest challenge in um, starting up your business and then as you do your business? <laughs> Multiple. <laughs> okay, what is the biggest one um, you can think of? Top two, maybe. I would say trying to get our doors open. Uh, we had so many roadblocks in the fact of getting it open. And, um, you know, there's times that Nick and I look at each other and we're like, ooh, we're all in. <laughs> um, and it's a scary feeling, but it's that leap yeah. of faith you got to take. Uh, at that point, well, every day it's a new, we're learning something new. Uh, it may be a new problem. It may be something that we dealt with before, our machine, uh, anything of that sort. I mean, anything can go wrong. But it's just overcoming that and learning from that situation, you know, not getting afraid of it, but realizing, hey, let's fix this, let's, let's get this going again. What has made you overcome it? What, what element do you think made you be able to push beyond and go over that hurdle? Just kind of having, I think for us, it's having a bigger vision um, and having a goal. Um, from starting the donut thing, you know, it's all of our friends are in the bar industry and us telling them that, hey, we're <laughs> opening a donut shop. Everyone... And having that picture and everything in your own mind of we knew exactly what we were trying to do yeah. and what we were trying to create and in everybody else's mind, you know, it's just like a, a normal donut shop with some yeah. shells and old donuts and we don't know, you know, it's just, yeah. and so just keeping that in the back of your mind that you really are creating something unique and different and when you get those doors open, like those people are really just going to be kind of blown away like, oh, this is not what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And then I think the other thing is just realizing through the process that People that you always think know everything, don't know everything, and they've uh -huh. been where you're at. Um, asking for help, finding those people that have done things in business and not being afraid to ask them because um, most of those people are more than willing to give you advice or help you in any way they can because they've been there. That's important, right? Seeking out assistance early on before it becomes a really yeah. big issue. Yes. How about yes. passion for your business? Is that something that you know is underlying all of that that helps you because you, you love what you're doing, you have a vision, and you're committed to doing it? Is that Definitely. I think um, passion is one of the bi biggest keys in, you know, running a business. Um, if you have passion for it, you're not, you're not working. It's not work. It's something that you love doing. Um, we love purveying our message of who we are, um, bringing forth, you know, happiness, aloha. When people come into the shop and, you know, there's smiles. Working at a bar, you don't give somebody a drink, they get mad. You know, right. you give somebody a donut, they're really they're happy. happy. Yeah. Isn't it funny? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to be coming up with our short break, but um, just to real quickly, you know, so passion, understanding, uh, um, I guess being able to reach out for assistance mm -hmm. and um, understanding how to break it down piece by piece. Is that yeah. a good way to yes. describe yeah, no, it? And everybody's been there. Yeah. Anyone, anyone that you look forward to or look up to has been there at one point or another. So realize that not everybody knows everything. Yeah, that, that, that's a good real, yeah. realization, right? And then so you have other mentors besides SPDC to help you is that another possibility? yeah i mean if we had lots of mentors through um i mean even books and things like that i consider mm -hmm. those mentors we've had a lot of people that have helped us in one way or another that mm -hmm. are mentors um so yeah we've taken on as many as we can yeah. always learning too. always learning we're gonna go to a break now thank you yeah. thank you aloha my name is duration you are watching think tech hawaii i will be hosting a show here every other wednesday at 1 p.m. and we will be talking to a lot of experts and guests around sustainability, social justice, the future here in Hawaii, progressive politics, and a whole lot more. So please tune in and thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, my name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at one o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about, human stories about law and life. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to Adventures in Small Business. Today we have our guest is Nicholas Comfort. 
and beyond Zablan from Prevé Donut Stop. So, can you share with us um, what kind of advice would you give to people who are just starting out or considering opening a business, whether it's a donut shop or a clothing store or whatever it may be? Uh, don't open a donut shop yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, just keep on going. Uh, don't give up. You're going to hit a lot of hurdles, speed bumps, mountains, um, everything. But don't, don't give up. Keep on going. Seek help, you know. Call, you know, the Hawaii Business Center and just keep, up, keep the drive. So if you had to do something differently, what would you have done differently? Looking back to your <laughs> starts. I don't think there's enough time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um... What jumps out at you the most that I wish I had done this a little bit differently and I think maybe it I mean, maybe have avoided or helped us financially or and why? Honestly, we had huge problems with construction, but yeah. I mean, you that's, know, that's very common. And that that's also what got us to the brink of, hey, we have to open doors tomorrow yeah. or we're like, yeah. we have no money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think a little more due diligence on that side of things. Um, could prevent that. Um, yeah, off the top of my head, that's definitely that's one yeah. of the things. Yeah. The biggest thing has yeah. been the construction little, understanding, yeah, giving little, this stuff a little more time. Is that what you think people would know, or just better understanding of the process? Um, I think a little bit. Well, I mean, a little bit of everything, yeah. but um, more so just a little bit more due diligence on the people you bring on to do these and how credible it is. Yeah. Those types of things. Yeah. That's good to know. So, yes. uh, license contractor using mm -hmm. all those right because I mean if your budget is only X amount of money and they say it's gonna be three months and ends up being six months well that yeah. button you know yeah. your, your reserve cash is now gone and so it, those are the things that yeah. disappear pretty quick because yeah. so having a cushion is yeah. important when you start oh, up right a cushion know. off of a cushion yeah. off of a cushion, yeah. Yeah. So off three cushion. cushions two cushions so yeah. ramp, a construction period yeah. delays and ramp up period for your business as well yes. additional right. unexpected delays yeah. right Absolutely. right okay. um, what was the pivotal moment in your business that you felt, okay, oh, this is, we're now getting traction and we're you're feeling more comfortable about the decision you made to become a donut shop owner? I think for me, it was probably when we met the Calcomies with Iolani Center. Um, with a new business concept <laughs> or idea, obviously it's very hard to go sell it to someone and say, hey, let me lease your space. Right. Um, when you have no experience, nothing proven. So it's really selling yourself as an entrepreneur and an idea and saying, you know, we're going to do this. Um, so for them to give us the chance, that was when it was like, okay, now focus forward. We've got a lease. Now it's how do we do this? That's yeah. what it was. And then yes. accounting system. We always talk about as business advisors, we always talk about, you know, an accounting software system. Mm -hmm. You folks have one? You folks have been using one? Yeah, at first we were using, uh, we actually did have a bookkeeper when we first got okay, started good. just for the fact that you're trying to do so many things at that point. Um, it, it's the last thing I wanted to try to do. <laughs> yeah. We did take our own books over and we, we just use a QuickBooks uh, online software, yeah. which is so convenient and very easy to do. And, and quick. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, <laughs> and I notice whenever we meet and we talk about, okay, how are you doing? You first really understand your financial statement. At, how critical is that, do you think, for your business? Uh, very critical. I mean, okay. learning every aspect of your business is critical. Um, from day to day, day to day agendas of what you have to get done. To, I mean, even you know, making sure the donuts are coming out a certain way, um, the glaze is a certain color. Everything is critical, and the financials is one of the, the most critical things you know, out there. <laughs> yeah, I think with the financials, it's understanding percentages of where you know your um, employee cost should be, mm -hmm. your product cost, and um, at the end of the day, your bottom number of what your what your margin you're trying to mm -hmm. make and what's realistic and monitoring those on a regular basis to know, you know, if your product cost is a little high, why is it high, um, you know, your employee cost, things like that. Just trying to figure out how to get those numbers and having goals of how, what numbers you want and how to get there. So when you started, did you have a business plan, projections, right? You had, we did. We did, yeah. yes. And it helped you to, as, as a roadmap? To yeah. Um, and even with that, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of... <laughs> winged yeah, sometimes. Yeah, winged it, I guess is the word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> With the numbers originally, but we did have people on Iolani's side looking at it that they know what they're doing. They uh -huh. know numbers. And um, that gave us a very quick sense of how to get, you know, what are we looking for? And it's like, this number's too high. Like, it should there? be around 25%. Yeah. Or this needs to be here. And so just that, that little mentorship right there gave us a knowledge yeah. of, okay, these is where these should be. And That's good. how do yeah. we get there? And okay. yeah. 
But it is good to have that business plan as a roadmap Absolutely. because it is yes. like your blueprint for your yes. business, right? I mean, right. it's a it's an evolving or it's a changing document, living mm -hmm. document. So you change it up, like with a lender, you change it up accordingly, mm -hmm. and then the projections help you like budget yourself right. yes. each time as you yes. launched it. Did that help as you launch your business? The projections and yeah, it that? just gives you the I guess the ability to um, kind of kind of grade yourself on how you're doing and if you're. <laughs> getting close to there or if you're not and then you know it gives an idea of the potential growth you have because mm -hmm. um, if you hit your number the first year then it's like okay what's our goal the next year yeah. Yeah. how do we keep growing um, without just staying stagnant you know many times you know having a partnership is um, is good it, mm -hmm. and it has its pros and cons right you know there's a the, having somebody go along the journey with you and you know encountering somebody um, be able to overcome some of those you know, difficult, but it also presents its own challenges, right? Mm -hmm. So could you kind of share a little bit about your partnership? How do you folks handle it when you come to a moment of, you know, uh, impasse? What do you folks do and what kind of advice do you have for keeping, keeping your partnership um, going well? Um, with us, I mean, we've worked together before. I mean, that's a plus. I mean, I know how he works, he knows how I work. And uh, especially behind the bar, it's one of those unspoken things like, I kind of know what his next step is. He kind of knows what mine is. This is our partnership right here. Um, no, but it, um, you know, I have full trust in this guy. I, I trust him with my, myself, my family, you know, everything. And um, I know he does the same thing for me. He be better. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you, but how do you keep it, you know, if you have different philosophies or there's a difference in, we should make this type of donut, but another person says, no, it's not going to pair well with our, you know, lineup. What do you folks do? How do you folks? It's, I think it's just having the conversation and talking yeah. through it, um, understanding each other's views of why I feel one way and why he feels another way, um, and going from there and trying to figure out, you know, what is the best solution to this. And um, luckily, we really haven't came across too much that is disagreements. Um, it's usually if he feels one way and he's, Pretty strongly about it, then it's like you know I, I trust your opinion on yeah. this, and I'm gonna. It comes with even hiring. You know, there's people that we brought on, and they said if if you trust them, then I trust them. Like I, yeah. I don't need uh, anything else besides that. Um, so it's it's having that that trust, I guess, in each other to make the right right decision for not only the business but each other. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is really good because you know managing a partnership in, in itself is as critical and as challenging as managing your business right? because mm -hmm. it's something in addition to managing your business right? yeah i think yeah. the one thing though i would like to say is that it's also it could have a lot of downfalls because yeah. i think a lot of people find the wrong partners yeah. um, but if in the advantage of having a partner is especially through that initial stage there's a lot of times that you probably just want to be done with it um, where if you have a partner that you can just kind of push each other, it's like, yeah, you know, you don't want to wake up. It's like, hey, you know, let's, let's meet. Let's yeah. go do this. Like, okay. But if, to wake if, up. <laughs> yeah, if there wasn't yeah. that phone call, hey, let's go grab coffee and figure yeah. this out, like I would maybe just stay in bed. <laughs> um, so there's that aspect of it too. I think there's a lot of good things that come um, if you find the right, the right partner. Yes, yeah. definitely. The trusting partner. That's yes. really, really good. And it's really nice to see how your partnership has really, and I see how you interact with each other. <laughs> and it's really, really <laughs> encouraging because yeah. you folks have a respect and you folks understand each other's nuances and you know, strengths yeah. and weaknesses. So I think you folks make a really, really good Thank partnership. You. Um, I guess what would you share with the audiences as would be the top maybe two, three or five, um, I guess, behaviors or skill sets that is really important to an entrepreneur that you have learned to adapt? I would say the first thing is that just realizing that an entrepreneur, all you are is a problem solver. Like you're going to have a problem almost every single day, one way or another, <laughs> whether it's going through the yes. process of opening the business or once the business is open, the machine's down, employee calls out, something's mm -hmm. wrong, you know, you got an unhappy customer. No matter what, every single day there's going to be something, something to, to fix or yeah. to figure out how, how do we overcome this. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing is going into the mindset and knowing that that's, that's your job. Yeah. If something may go wrong, so prepare for it. Yeah, that, it will go wrong. Yes. It yeah. will go wrong. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It will go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Really um, yeah, I mean, like I said before, being driven and, you know, not letting it get the best of you. A few days after we signed our lease, Dunkin' Donuts did a press release, release that they're going to open back in Hawaii. And both of us were just kind of like, oh. But at least we knew that there was a market for it. There's times that when we first opened, 
Nick and I are in the, in the shop and you know, we're not one person come through the doors. I'm just like, but don't let it hinder you. You know, just continue to push Keep on, going. figure it out. Positiveness. Exactly. Yeah. Um, your shop, Bay Donut Stop, is number one on Yelp. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank really you. Nice. If you could share with us some of your products here. And um, what is in the future? What is in the horizon for Purvey? Okay. Um, we'll start. This is going to be our weekly donut. Um, so it's actually a, a butter glaze with graham cracker, um, brown sugar toasted or cream belay oh, on a, a fresh mm. pineapple. <laughs> this is going to be um, our unicorn butt sneeze. And this is going to be a lemon glaze with fruity pebbles. It's our best seller. Everybody loves those. Mm. And I see like a what like a lihing lihing moi yeah, yeah, popular. Yeah. This is a uh, the sunburnt holly. We um, got it from uh, my business partner over here, Nick. He went to the beach and didn't put SPF a million on. <laughs> and uh, it's gonna be lemon with lihing moi on top of it. Uh, the, yeah, I said the other two super popular. They're all popular, but um, the Hulk smash is gonna be our house mint glaze with Oreo on top of it. So it's like a mint chocolate chip ice cream flavor or mm, a, a Girl that. Scout cookie. Good. Yeah. Um, and then the Killing Me Smalls, which is your classic kind of s'mores, s'mores taste that everybody really loves. That's my favorite. That's like a lemon glaze, right? <laughs> yes, lemon glaze. We have a graham cracker, and then we have a homemade uh, vanilla cream cheese drizzle on top of there. Oh, and a lot of people like Kit Kats, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's going to be our matcha glaze matcha with glaze. Kit Kat on there. That's our uh, it's a maple peanut butter glaze. With a raspberry preserved drizzle on it. Oh, that's a big seller. People love peanut butter and love that one. So your donuts are made to order. So when you go there, it's not like pre-made. You go to the showcase, you pick. You have to pick what you want, and then you actually make it there for yes. their, the customers to pick. Right. Yes. Yeah, everything's made fresh. It is a little scary. It's not a long process. <laughs> um, usually throughout the day, we're just constantly running donuts. So mm -hmm. it's not a, hey, wait for a, 30 right. minutes while it gets built. It's really fast. Yeah. It's in the process. Uh, so it makes it unique. We've kind of hit that market where it's a unique flavor profile, but also made fresh to order. There's people that do it fresh, but it's just very basic stuff. Yeah. Um, there's people that do, you know, the very unique flavors, but they're sitting in the case all day. Um, so it's trying to blend the two together and find a way to make that work. Yeah. We're just about closing up, but we wanted to share with you, um, you know, what's on the horizon for Purvey, and then there's an event coming up, right, that you folks are very proud of that's going to be featured. Yes, so uh, Children's Youth Day, we're uh, te teaming up with uh, Hoi News Now, and uh, we're basically giving donuts away for the children. Uh, I believe it's October 5th. Six. Um, we'll be at the tent at the state capitol, and we're just going to be hanging, handing out donuts for whoever comes by. All right, great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Nick and um, Brian, for being here with us, and we wish um, everybody check out their donuts on Corner Street. <laughs> Awesome. Have a great Thank day, you. everybody. Thank you. Thank you.